Hi everyone, my name is Miss Ho and I am a physics teacher. In this video, I am going to go through a very brief overview about how to interpret and analyze graphs for physics. So you can see on this slide, I've put a whole bunch of different graphs and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to learn how to interpret these graphs by expressing the relationships. In this case, I've only put general variables here, which are x and y, but bear in mind that in physics, we don't have x and y. They should be modified to fit the manipulated and responding variables of your experiments. So when you want to express the relationships, you have to remember to use the manipulated and responding variables of your graphs. So when you get a graph like this, which is a linear graph that goes through origin, this graph shows a relationship which is directly proportional. However, you must remember you cannot just write directly proportional. You have to write the sentence in full, which in this case is, let me use a text function here, you have to write it as y is directly proportional to x. Let me make this bigger so that you can see more clearly. To write it in full. You're not allowed to just write directly proportional. You also cannot write y and x are directly proportional. That's not allowed. So you have to write it in full this way. If your graph is not y and x, for example, if it was a p against h graph, remember to change the variables accordingly, which means you would write it as p is directly proportional to h. What if you get a graph that is linear but it doesn't go through origin? Like this. So it's a straight line that may touch the y-axis or the x-axis. In this case, you have to be very specific, which means that you would have to express it this way. y increases linearly with x. You cannot write the general relationship of when x increases, y increases. This is not allowed for physics because this graph very clearly shows us that the relationship between these two variables are linear. That's why you have to write it this way. Y increases linearly with X. Whenever we want to interpret or analyze graphs, we have to write it in such a way that it is as specific and as accurate as possible. That's why when it's a linear graph that goes through the origin, you must write this. This is the only acceptable answer for this kind of graph. For this graph, you cannot write y increases linearly with x because even though it's a linear graph, it is not accurate enough. It's a linear graph that goes through origin, so specifically, it is directly proportional. So when you see this kind of graphs, then you must write increases linearly. This is obviously not a directly proportional relationship. What if you get a curved graph like this? So if you find that the graph curves in such a way that y increases with x, this case, it's a bit difficult to express the curve relationship. So for this kind of case, you are allowed to write the general relationship, which is when x increases, oops, y increases. Only when you cannot express it specifically using directly proportional or with the term linear, then you are allowed to write it in this form. When x increases, y increases. If it's a straight line, you have to either use this relationship or this relationship. And because these sets are linear, you cannot write the general way of x increases, y increases. That sentence is only reserved for situations where we cannot express the relationship that easily. And that's why in this case and on these cases only, you can express the relationship in a general form. What if we find the relationship is not an upward trend, but a downward trend like this? You have to remember this is not an inversely proportional relationship. This is still a linear relationship, which means that when you express it, you write it as y, one, it's not appearing, y decreases linearly with x. When you see a graph like this, you must write the linear relationship. What if you don't have a linear relationship like this? What if you have a curved graph like this? Yes, then in this case, you would write when x increases, 
y decreases. So you can see that if it's a curved graph which you cannot express as easily uh, as you would for linear relationships, then you are allowed to write the general relationships, which in this case is when x increases, y decreases, as you can see. So then when does inversely proportional occur? So you have to recall what you've learned in maths. An inversely proportional relationship is only when you get a curved graph like this where no matter what, these curves will not touch the y or x axis. Another way in which this kind of graph can be expressed is a linear graph that goes through origin, but it is plotted not against x, but against 1 over x. In case you're wondering, huh, how is this so? Recall what you have learned in maths. Remember that this kind of graph is expressed this way. Y is inversely proportional to x. When you look at it this way, this also means y is directly proportional to 1 over x. So for this kind of graphs, you can write it as y is inversely proportional to x. Let me move this so that you can see the sentence. Another option, let me put it in the center so that you can see more clearly. You can also write it as y is directly proportional to 1 over x. These two sentences have the same meaning. So you can write either sentence for both these graphs. So this is how you interpret and analyze the graphs. Remember that for physics, your graphs are not y against x. You have to modify the y and x to suit the variables in your experiment. So when you express the relationships of your graphs, you must remember to change the y and x to suit the variables that you are using in your experiment. I hope you have found this video educational as well as helpful. Don't forget to click like and hit subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, Physics Rocks. Thank you for watching and happy studying.